Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Michelle and I'm the chair of the Fire Risk Management Group. Today's webinar is going to be brought to you by Anne Isaacs, who is one of the vice chairs of the Fire Risk Management Group. At the end of the session, we will be joined by Gary Laird and Ian Scott, who will be taking part in the Q&A session at the end. Throughout the session, if you do have questions, please can ask you to pop them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, rather than the chat function, and we'll make sure that we pick them up there. We will try and get through as many questions as we can at the end of the webinar, but please be assured if we don't get to your question, we will be answering all of the questions following the webinar and they will be published on our microsite page on the Irish website and on our LinkedIn page. So before I hand over to Anne, I would just like to do a bit of um, advertising for our Fire Risk Management Group Conference, which we'll, we, we will be holding in September, the 19th of September at Informa Markets in London. It will be a full day event um, full of networking, discussions, presentations, and all, everything around, um, pardon the pun, but hot topics that are related to fire safety and good fire safety management. So um, you can grab some more information by scanning the QR code that's currently on your screen, or you can follow us on our LinkedIn social media page where you will be able to find more information on that event. So I will now hand you over to Anne, who will be taking you through today's presentation. As I say, any questions, please pop them in the Q&A box at the bottom and we'll pick them up at the end of the session. Enjoy the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michelle. So good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all well wherever you are in the world. So the goal of the Irish Fire Risk Management Group is to provide information for workers, managers and contractors and visitors with a view to developing a culture of promoting fire safety in the workplace and at home. I will talk you through the importance of fire doors, outlining the key aspects of fire doors, inspections and what's new in legislation. Hopefully there'll be time for questions at the end. My name is Anna, as, it's, as Michelle has introduced me. I've been a member of the Institution of Occupational Safety and Health for 14 years and have volunteered on various committees and groups within IOSH for all of those 14 years. I'm the Joint Vice Chair of the Fire Risk Management Group, a member of IOSH Council, a trustee for the Irish Benevolent Fund, a school governor, a member of my local horticultural society. And in my spare time, I have a full-time job as an estate manager. I manage private residential estate in London. I've always managed residential property, having managed student halls for more than 20 years, 16 years at the University of Nottingham, eight years at London South Bank University, and four years for Imperial College under an FM company called Apleona. The fundamental principles of fire safety are life safety, property protection, and business continuity. These three elements are achieved through fire prevention, fire precautions, emergency planning, and fire risk management. Fire protection refers to measures that are taken to prevent fire from becoming destructive, reducing the impact of an uncontrolled fire, and of course, saving lives and property. The term fire protection may be synonymous with fire precautions. Fire precautions are the operational steps that are taken before the fire breaks out to safeguard people where they live, work or visit. For example, a shopping centre, a place of interest. There are two types of fire protection, active and passive. Active fire protection are things like sprinklers, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, all of which become active in the event of a fire. 
passive fire protection are things like fire doors, dampeners, fire stopping around pipework cables and services, fire resistant glass and smoke curtains. This is a form of fire safety provision that remains dormant or inert during normal conditions, but becomes active in a fire situation. It is an integral component of structural fire protection or compartmentation within a building, which is designed to contain fires or slow their spread. Of all passive fire protection items that are available, the fire door is the least thought about or even considered. These pictures show how those individuals acted. They may or may not have been aware of how important it was to close the door at that time. As you can see, the, room, the rooms are intact, but the door did its job. I'm just gonna pause for five seconds. Um, so I just want to ask a question. Um, Michelle, can you just come on the screen for a moment for me, please? I just want to check the view. Are you seeing the slide or are you seeing my, um, is it just the slide that you we can, can see? We can see your slide, what went right when things went wrong, and we can see you at the top, well, the top of my screen. That's that, that's fine. I just want to, um, before I go any further, because there was a little change on my side. So everything's all right for everybody to view. Thank you very much, Michelle checking that for me. So moving on quickly, um, at one of the student halls that I worked at, in the first year, there were 32 automatic fire alarm activations, which I will abbreviate to AFAs. I looked through um, the list of what those causes were of those AFAs, and around 90% were due to students coming back, putting some of a night out, and putting the grill pans on with some bacon, you know, as you do after a night out. The grill pan was already filled with dirty grease. As it heated up, it produced smoke and set the fire alarm off. So there was fire brigade were coming out almost constantly. So the following year, I engaged with the fire brigade who visited the hall, gave safety talks to the students. And I put in place a very strict checking regime so that the, every week grill pans were checked. If they were dirty, I would put the grill pans in, well, not myself, I had a team. They would put the grill pans in the sink with very washing up liquid. So if anybody needed to use the grill pan again, they had to wash it. Detectors were checked. Um, the kitchen doors were checked to make sure that they closed. And if there were any remedial works or any damage that was done quickly, fire extinguishers were checked, et cetera. If the students either wedged open the kitchen door or covered the smoke, the heat detector or the smoke detector on the corridor with socks, they would have to come and see me because I basically had to tell them off. But that was part of the job. But by putting this system in place and getting these checking regimes in place, the following year, the AFAs were reduced to six, one of which was a real fire. And these are the pictures that I took myself. The pictures don't look as bad as it really was. And I, I, this slide, it doesn't show, it doesn't do it justice at all, but it was really bad. Um, but when the fire alarm went off, the students had evacuated. I went down, because we had a fully addressable um, fire alarm system, so I was able to go directly to that point. And I looked through the vision panel in the kitchen and it was full of smoke and the chip pan that this student had put on to make chips was fully ablaze. Um, when I went back to the fire panel, obviously the fire brigade turned up and did what they had to do. The heat detector in the kitchen had set off the alarm. The heat detector is set at 59 degrees. So it was pretty, pretty hot in that kitchen. I kid you not, if that door was wedged open, this would have been a very, very different affair. So what of this ordinary fire door? They're specialist doors with a building, within a building or structure that are specifically designed, manufactured, installed and maintained to provide safety to occupants and users. We walk past and through them every day without a second thought, but fire doors play a vital role in the defense against fire. 
they provide a vital aspect of passive fire protection to prevent the passage of fire, smoke and products of combustion, including toxic gases. Fire doors have many vital features and are essential to the survival of people in a building that is on fire. Two of the most important functions of fire doors are to inform and to form an impermeable barrier to stop the spread of fire and most often smoke. And when open, provide people with an easy means of access and around the building and also as a secure means of escape. To these ends, it is fundamental that the door works properly as the designer intended it to. So I just need to have a quick drink of my juice because my mouth is getting dry. So to move on, a door that is wide open or wedged open is useless at preventing the passage of fire and smoke and compromises the complementary aspects of passive fire protection within the building. One open door at the wrong moment can put at risk the whole building. Consequently, it is vital that fire doors are properly designed, manufactured and installed, certificated to the required standards, inspected for proper functionality, wear and tear, maintained on a PPM schedule, that's planned preventative maintenance, repaired or replaced if standards are breached, repaired to the correct standards using the correct materials, including door furniture. All components on fire doors, i.e. the door furniture, must comply with British Standard Certification, which is issued by the British Standard Institute. Ideally, the frame should be the same standard as the door, purchased together as a door set. Using substandard door furniture can have devastating consequences in a fire. For example, regular hinges may not perform as well as fire rated hinges. I will say at this point, I did see a question in the chat. These slides will be available. I know this slide is a little bit busy, but the information is there for you to glean later. Fire doors are made up of a number of different components, each of which is designed to provide protection against the spread of fire and smoke. All components of a fire door include the door itself. This is usually made up from either timber or metal and is fitted with a fire resistant core. The frame. The frame is designed to provide an airtight seal around the door, helping to prevent the spread of smoke ideally should be made from the same material as the door and tested together. Seals, intermescent strips which expand on heating and cold smoke seals should be fitted to the door frame or door edge to resist the passage of smoke and flames. There are different types and sizes of seals which activate at temperatures that are above human survival levels. So it's crucial that the correct size is fitted to the right door. Glazing and heat transfer grills. The glazing in a fire door is designed to resist the spread of fire and heat while still allowing light to pass through. Glazing and heat transfer grills are only fitted in a factory, in a factory controlled environment by a competent trained individual. Grills are fitted using the correct components, i.e. fire rated glass and intermescent beading. If the wrong glass is used in a fire situation, radiant heat will transfer through the glass and can start a fire on the other side of the door. The hardware, the hardware of a, of a door, of the hardware or fire or door furniture on a fire door, such as handles and hinges, must be fire rated. There should be three fire rated hinges with matching fittings, which prevents the door from warping in a fire. A perco closer, which is a brass concealed door closer, that funny thing with a chain hanging out, or the hydraulic door self closer. These items will close the door into the frame. Door handles, which are tested as part of the door set, other hardware, depending on the type of door, could be a spy hole or a letterbox, letterbox latches, etc., all should be fire rated. Signage, fire door keep shut sign, preferably should be screwed in place. 
Whilst fire door and frames are usually made of timber, if a door needs to be replaced, it can be refitted without replacing the frame, although it is highly recommended that a complete door set is fitted as they are manufactured of the same material and would react the same in the event of a fire. Metal doors are normally factory assembled or provided, by a comp provided in a complete kit for, for on-site assembly, which should ensure they meet the specified and required fire performance. Metal doors perform differently in a fire as the door leaves expand into the frame and may distort and bow towards the source of the fire. They also conduct high levels of heat. Timber architraves must not be fitted to the unexposed side of a metal door as they would catch a light due to the heat transfer from the metal frame. Approved document B, Appendix C, gives details on the provisions of fire door sets with regard to what standard of protection should be specified. Here are some examples showing the spy hole, the letterbox and locks all complete with their intermescent pieces cut to fit. And the glazing on the door, you can just see it around inside the intermescent seal. Again, using substandard fittings will allow smoke and toxic fumes through those gaps. The rating of a door is represented by FD and then a number, be it 30, 60, 120 or 240. This number represents the minimum amount of time in minutes that a door maintains it, its structural integrity in the event of a fire. Fire doors with a rating in excess of FD60 are rarely used on escape routes, but may be found where the prevention of property is important. For example, in data storage areas where documents cannot be removed in the event of a fire or in security sensitive environments. Some of these doors have the appearance of timber, but may be construct, constructed of a mineral core. Here are the initial specifications of an FD30 fire door. Note the minimum, the minimum thickness is 44 millimeters for a thick solid door. No cracks, no damage, and it must fit firmly into the frame. Here are the initial specifications of an FD60 fire door. Noting that an FD60 fire door can be made from steel and is 10 mil thicker than the FD30 door. The British standards now includes new fire precautions in the design, construction, and use of buildings to ensure the standard is harmonized in the recently revised British standard 9999 code of practice for fire safety in the design, management and use of buildings. External grade steel rated fire doors can be rated in tests undertaken by independent third party test houses up to six hours fire resistance. Typically, doors are manufactured from 1.5 millimeter thick galvanized steel to give high intrinsic levels of strength and security. Intermescent steels are installed into the grooves that are cut into the door or the door frame. As soon as the temperature in the vicinity of the intermescent strip exceeds 200 degrees Celsius, usually about 10 to 15 minutes after the start of a fire, the seal swells and closes up the gaps between the door and the frame. Drop down seals may also be fitted to the lower edge of the door. Smoke seals. With smoke seals, as smoke is an even greater threat to life and property than flames, particularly in the early stages of a fire, fire doors should also be fitted with a cold smoke seal to prevent the ingress of smoke around the door edges. I used to tell my students that the smoke will kill you long before the flames are licking at your heels. And that, I tell you, got their attention because it is really true. Combined smoke and intermescent seals are available. Fire doors that require smoke protection 
are designated with an S suffix. So then it becomes an FD30S or an FD60S and so forth. It should be noted that non-fire rated exterior emergency fire escape doors are often incorrectly referred to as fire doors. They do not have to have a fire rating. Their main issue in terms of, is in terms of security, but their primary function is to provide a means of escape. Depending on what the building is used for, some fire exit doors unlock when the fire alarm is activated. It has been known that opportunity thieves set off the fire alarm and then sneak in once the doors are open. Remember, fire doors have the function of maintaining compartmentation within the building and that travel distances are there as a guide to give the maximum distance from one compartment where a person could seek safety to the next. Fire doors and final exit doors have different functionality and serve different purposes. A final exit door may be fitted with a quick opening latch or a push bar egress mechanism and should never be fitted with a door close with a self closer. In a building that I worked in, it was an old building and the flat doors were originally 1930s Georgian style, like the one shown in the picture. In 2016, the company um, sent one of the doors off to be tested and, and to be burnt, basically. Um, at 27 minutes into the test, um, the beading around the um, glass started to kindle, um, but the rest of the door held. So rather than replace all 250 doors, which should have, which would have been a costly affair, um, the wire, a wire mesh fireproof glazing was fitted over the glass and sealed with intermescent sealant, together with a perco closer, a fireproof letterbox, and all the other fire-related um, furniture I mentioned earlier. All the doors were then checked and certified to an FD30S standard. I'm not going to go into great detail on this slide, but the slides are available. But this slide is a guide to what to look for if you want to upgrade a door to a fire door. Clearly, lightweight doors that have what I would term a made up of egg boxes will not be sufficient. Whereas if you have a solid door, no less than 44 millimeters in thickness, that is a good start. This has been taken directly from .gov.uk website. This is to ensure that we're all working and singing from the same hymn sheet. The Fire Safety England Regulations 2022 came into force on the 23rd of January 2023. It's important to note what is written, that it is a criminal offence if the breach places one or more persons at risk of death or serious injury in the event of a fire. It's also worth mentioning that with these regulations, the responsibility has been shifted from the fire brigade to the responsible person in such that they must carry out quarterly checks on communal doors and annual checks on flat doors. I would recommend that you read Statutory Instrument 547, Fire Precautions England, which tells you what you must do in relation to fire doors. It's only seven pages and it's a very easy read. So how do you check a fire door? Certification, let's start there. Look for a label or plugs that are usually placed along the hinge side of the door or on top of the door. Gaps around the top and sides of the door should be less than four millimeters. The bottom of the door no more than eight millimeters. Basically, you should not be able to see daylight through any gaps. Seals, check the intermescent seals are intact, and not painted over. Sometimes the seals are fitted to the door frame as opposed to the door itself. These will expand to seal the door in the early stages of a fire. Smoke seals are either a polymer blade or brushes, again, designed to reduce the passage of smoke and fumes passing through the gaps in the door. Hinges, there should be three hinges or more, depending on the use of the building, and that they are properly fixed in place 
with no screws missing, displaying the British standard markings on the hinges. Rising butt hinges may be found in older buildings are fine, but not recommended for new builds. The door closer. Ensure that the door closer is correctly attached and free from damage, that it is adjusted correctly to close the door into the frame, but without slamming too hard. Does the door close? Check the door close, closes fitting into the frame and does not catch on the flooring or the door frame. I have a trick there. Open the door fully and let it close. It should close into the frame. Open it halfway, even from the halfway mark, let it go and it should close into the frame. Uh, open it again at the quarter mark, quarter of the way open and, and it should shut into the frame from all three angles. Fire doors can have a hard life. They are consistently being opened, left to slam, shut, pushed, kicked, opened with feet, trolleys bashed, beds bashed against them and other heavy items. This means that they can become damaged, which could reduce their effectiveness. Check that all parts of the fire door are free from damage and make sure any glass in the door is not cracked. So who can inspect a fire door? A competent person with knowledge, approach, training and experience, which is abbreviated to Kate, having theoretical and practical knowledge. New passive fire protection and fire door inspection qualifications. The question of competency is being increasingly recognized within the industry. So it is vital to providing high quality fire safety. Being able to evidence, recognize and accredited, qual accredited qualifications is one of the ways to demonstrate competency requirements are being met as they provide employers and clients with a benchmark that they can have confidence in. The Fire Protection Association has, an, has an announced the launch of three newly accredited routes to support you in demonstrating your acquired knowledge. You can go to their website for full details. How often should the doors be checked? It's a good question. It's a life critical equipment. We've already established that fact. However, there have, have there been any alterations? Is there any damage to the door? What does your fire risk, risk assessment say? Communal doors have to be checked quarterly and I'll keep saying this, flat doors annually. And doors in a hospital or a shopping centre should be checked even more frequently. So to the identification of a fire door. The first step is for the manufacturer to construct a fire door design to a specification that in their opinion will resist a fire, will, will resist fire for a specified length of time. The door set will then be tested by an approved fire testing center. And if it is passed, any door sets constructed to that specification can be considered for certification. Once the certification is approved, each similarly constructed door set will be identified by a label identifying the manufacturer, the date of manufacture, and the designated fire rating of the, of the door type. This identification is usually fixed to the top edge of the door or color-coded plug may be inserted into the door on the side close to the hinges. For hospitals, fire doors display a disc at the top of each face of the door showing the designated fire performance. Identification marks can sometimes be removed or painted over during installation or adjustment of a, of a door set. But if the work has been professionally carried out, this should be avoided. A fire door may carry other labels or marks, but these may not refer to a third party certification scheme, in which case you should contact the manufacturer for evidence of performance. Manufacturers can certify fire door sets both for identification purposes and to guarantee their performance in a fire situation. The British Woodworking Federation, BWF, is a major organisation that provides fire door ratings. BWF fire, door, fire ratings for fire door assemblies are stated in minutes and prefixed by the words FD, as I've mentioned earlier. As part of the steps 
being taken by the BWF to simplify fire door identification and eliminate confusion in specification. The existing FD20 rating is no longer available. Every BWF CERT fire, fire door assembly carries a permanent and tamper evident label. For more information, visit the British Woodworking Federation website. BM Trada exists to help make certain that the materials, products and processes are tested, inspected and certified for their customers are always safe, quality compliant and fit for purpose. The Woodworking Association, BM Trada, uses a system known as QMark which is a series of coloured plugs inserted into the door to indicate the fire door type. Member details, the scope of certification during specification installation and service history. The label or plug indicates that the door is a third party certified fire door and provided that it has been installed and maintained in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions, it should provide the fire protection level indicated. Timber doors that have achieved third-party certification from BM Trada feature colour-coded fire door plugs, giving specifiers and building owners a way of establishing that the door is certified. For more details, visit BM Trada website. If keeping your fire door closed at all times is inconvenient, you can fit them with devices which hold the door open legally and safely. These devices must fail safe and release the doors to close when the fire alarm sounds. Hold open devices are used either to hold a fire door in the open position against the action of a door closer or to allow it to swing freely, automatically releasing the closing mechanism in a fire situation. Such doors should be marked on both sides as approximately, at approximately eye level with the appropriate sign conforming to the British Standard 5499-1. If the fire doors are fitted with, an, with a hold open devices, test them weekly to ensure they're in good working order. So we're going to watch a short video now showing a fire door test. This short film was shot under test conditions at the UCAS approved test house of Exover Warrington Fire and shows just what happens to fire doors when components are fitted incorrectly, or worse, not included at all. We tested three identical 30 minute fire doors fitted into identical frames, all with correct 3mm gaps between the door and frame. Door A was glazed incorrectly using toughened safety glass and with no intumescent seals in its glazing system. The intumescent smoke seals around the door were fitted in pieced sections rather than in continuous lengths along the two long edges and across the top. Door B was also glazed. This time the correct fire rated glass was used and was installed using an appropriate fire door glazing system. All other components were fitted as described in the manufacturer's instructions. Door C simulated a typical fire rated entrance door installed in flats and apartments, complete with an ordinary letter plate and viewer but with no intumescent seals between the door and frame. It's a situation we often find where letter plates are fitted without any correct fire protection or where a non fire rated door has been installed. As the test starts, smoke begins to appear from all the doors as the facings on the doors burns almost immediately. Although this reduces on the central door B, it remains significant on the other two doors in the test. Almost immediately, cracking is heard coming from door A as heat reaches the glass. 
and after only four minutes, the glass dramatically fails, and the door is engulfed in fire and smoke. Imagine if that door had been in a hotel corridor. The fire could have rapidly reached other parts of the building where occupants were trying to escape. A frightening situation. The door is sealed to allow the remainder of the test to continue. It's now five minutes into the test, and the letter plate on door C falls out, setting fire to the outside of the door. Imagine if this was in a block of flats. Fire and smoke would spread down the corridor, endangering the lives of other residents, as well as causing a potential significant fire risk to the fire and rescue authorities. To continue the test, the burning letter plate is extinguished, and the letter plate slot in the door is sealed. Our focus continues on door C, the door with no intumescent seals, which has not only allowed smoke to pour from its frame surrounds, but is now starting to glow red hot as the fire burns through from the edges. As this part of the test reveals, intumescent smoke seals are crucial in the installation of fire doors. Without them, not only is the fire rating of the door reduced by 50%, but by now, killer smoke would have been spreading to other parts of the building for over 15 minutes. The door is now sealed as we focus on door B for the remainder of the test. We're now approaching and then exceeding 30 minutes and our correctly glazed and correctly installed door is still holding back the fire, doing what it was designed and engineered to do. It's 33 minutes before this door finally gives out. The test complete, the view from the fireside reveals more. You can see how doors A and C are completely burned through, threatening danger to the fire and rescue authorities, whilst the correctly installed door in the middle is charred but has remained intact. Remember, fire doors are not ordinary doors. They're engineered fire safety devices. Their correct installation and maintenance is vital in preventing fire and smoke from spreading saving property and protecting lives. For further information about the correct specification, installation and maintenance of fire doors, visit bwf-certifier.org.uk. There you go. So you've just seen how important it is to have the specified components for a fire door. As well as that, a fire door must have documented evidence of performance. This can be in the form of a single test report, several fire test reports, an assessment issued by an organisation accredited by UCAS to issue fire door assessments or third party product conformity certification. Essentially, they are certified and nominal fire doors. Nominal fire doors are door sets that are not certified, but in the opinion of a fire risk assessor, will hold back a fire for a specified period of time. Identifying a nominal fire door is very difficult, but there are a number of indicators that may suggest that the door is a nominal fire door. Just be cautious. For example, older panel doors, especially if they are less than 44 millimetres in thickness, are unlikely to be FD30 rated. However, the door may have been upgraded or modified at some stage to achieve some degree of fire resistant performance. So be even more cautious. Check the condition of the door. Does it fit into the frame? If possible, remove the door closer from the frame and swing the door in a limited arc between the thumb and finger index, swinging it backwards and forwards. This gives you a good indication of the weight of the door. Hollow doors are reasonably easy to detect using this method, but give it a try. The, some positive indicators about nominal fire doors 
is that fire doors will have an automatic closing device fitted, spring-loaded self-closing hinges and concealed closers fitted into the door frame. They, they may be uh, present if, the, if they're there, but genuine certificated fire doors will also have cold smoke seals and an intumescent seal. Exceptions may apply where the leakage of smoke is essential for detecting a fire early. A fire door may well display a fire safety sign indicating fire door keep shut, but to do so does not guarantee that the door is a certifi certificated product. So just be really, really cautious when you're looking at these. So looking at this, look at this fire escape. It's just packed. That is just ridiculous. That is just really, really, really ridiculous. So they're not great doors. And uh, I think you don't you don't need um, any glasses like what I'm wearing to see that there are so many things that is wrong with this. And then we've got a great looking fire exit door. So to close, I would urge you to check the doors regularly, carry out any repairs as quickly as possible, as that humble door may one day just save someone's life. The subject of fire doors is a big topic, and I think I've just scratched on the surface, um, but this subject is covered in great detail in the big red book, which I'm told is coming out shortly, and we're just waiting for some information from IOSH on how it will be released. So that just leaves me to say thank you for listening, and why not join the Fire Risk Management Group on LinkedIn you can just scan in this QR code. So I'll now take some questions. Thanks, Anne. That's a, a great presentation. I can see everyone uh, in agreement. Um, first off, I'd just like to thank everybody that's been taking part in the Q&A uh, behind the scenes. Um, there's been some uh, Great advice being shared um, by everybody um, throughout the session. So um, thank you to everybody for doing that. Um, we have 37 questions in the chat box. We will go through as many as we can. Um, but as I say, if we don't get to your question, um, please be assured that after uh, today's webinar, uh, we will be downloading all the questions and responding to those which will then go on to the Fire Risk Management Group microsite page, as well as our LinkedIn page. So um, we have Ian and Gary who have joined us for the Q&A session. Uh, thank you guys for um, popping in this afternoon. Um, I'm gonna start with some um, questions that have been coming in. They are still coming in, so bear with me as I scroll through them. Um, first off, um, what um, designates that a fire door must have a smoke seal? First place to start would be your fire risk assessment and what is the use of the building. That that would be yeah. first place nice to start. Simple. Yeah, that is definitely the first place yeah. to start. What does your fire what is your fire risk assess, has said? What is the building being used for? All of these elements will determine whether you for for, for argument's sake sleeping accommodation. That's that goes without well, in my opinion, goes without saying because you want to protect the life of the people. Because as I said in my presentation, and it is, it's a line I've always said that the smoke will kill long before the flame gets anywhere. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Nice and, nice and simple and um, straightforward. What, what does your risk assessment say? What are you using the room for? Um, so uh, this one is around fire doors and when there might be a slight variation in the requirements. So at what height does a fire door not have to have three hinges? So for example, a small under stairs cupboard, um, is there a stand that allows two hinges in this type of situation? I would generally have thought- Thank you, Ian. I generally have thought not. I mean, one of the characteristics that lets you spot visually a fire door is the fitting of three hinges. And the reason for that is not just to sell more hinges, but it's to stop the door actually bowing or bending in the frame under the effect of heat and, and flame and everything else. Um, 
I'm slightly troubled by the, the words there about a small door under the stairs or whatever it is, um, <laughs> as to whether that's a fire door. Mm, that's a very interesting situation. So, you know, you'd have to be, you'd have to look at it very, very carefully. I can't see where you'd have a fire door under a stair because it's not really a means of escape from a, a building, generally speaking. Mm. But Gary, sorry, you're, you're, you're nodding. It might depend on what's there. in the cupboard electrical main electrical yeah. intake or something like that so again risk assessment but gary yes i, I would totally agree with ian uh, if i'm looking at a fire door the first thing i will look is to see how many hinges are on it and mm. it should have the three hinges what i tend to find which wasn't in the the um the presentation which i'm, I'm sure Anne will have understood the the above the fire door i deal all the time with fire doors and I'll say the fire door is fine however you've just got an ordinary glazing panel above so it just undermines the whole concept of your fire door so when you check in your door set make sure you check above immediately above as well because people put hardboard they'll put all manner of um, flammable materials but because it's a fire door they think it's okay yes the the, the glass panel above the door is generally to add to enable more light yes transmitted into the room and particularly in student accommodation people yes. get very shy so they'll put a poster or a piece of cardboard up to to add to their privacy which is entirely understandable of course um, but yes that has to be treated exactly the same but another comment I, I could add to that is when and we also I was watching some of the, the chat and, and comments that people were making when a door set is put together and the door and the frame are matched and put into the wall, et cetera, these days it's entirely and completely uh, right and, and proper that people who are doing the installation work take photographs. Digital cameras are so easily available, not even on a phone, you know, a small, small digital camera, and take photographs and show the way in which the frame has been offered up to the wall and installed and intumescent sealing, for example, construction material sealing has been put around the frame to um, provide a fire stopping around the frame, between the frame and the, the uh, block wall or whatever, to make sure that that structure doesn't allow smoke and flame and heat and such like to transmit readily. Gary, last word on yes, something? Yes, I agree with what Ian has just said there. Uh, enforcing authorities, particularly fire, the, fire, the fire service and also fire assessors are now focusing on compartmentation um, yeah. as part of the overall strategy of fire safety in that building, of which as we've spoken about, the fire doors are an integral part. Absolutely, definitely. Um, so obviously uh, sticking with the subject of fire doors and certification. So um, we've had a comment in, I recently saw some fire door certification marks and stickers had been painted over. What would be the, uh, Ian holds his hand, so does Anne. What would be the recommended, recommended action to resolve this? Sorry, I got my words out. Um, Ian, Anne. Well, first well, of all, so I'm taking the paintbrush off the person who painted over them in the first <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that, that's, a, that's a fascinating question because this is the sort of thing that, that in reality, in, real, in the real world, this actually happens. So to, to wind back a little bit, if it's a relatively new building or, or whatever, then you'd specify the, the type of door you want fitted. Do you want a light door? Do you want a dark finished door or whatever? There shouldn't be any reason to paint it. Mm -hmm. One of the indicators for nominal fire doors, and I think that's a great... Uh, misnomer you know it, it's either a fire door or it isn't and mm -hmm. to suggest it's a nominal one means that it has some sort of quasi status of yes of being real or not and one of the other indicators for that is they are painted over mm -hmm. um, usually in, in gloss white paint um, to make them look nice but then then you look at these things and you think well if somebody's painted over this label I mean what was the original specification if you've got the documentation, then if you've kept that in your fire risk management system, then you would know that it's um, an ACME. There are other manufacturers, I'm sure. Yes. An ACME fire door has been ordered and it was installed by the installation company and you've got documentation 
for it. Um, I suppose if you can't get the paint off the door or off the covering the label, then you'd have to go back to the manufacturer and see if you can get another label which could be applied. I would doubt, I would doubt that actually give you one because you could apply that to any old door that you bought down in the market, as it were. So it's 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 not a responsible thing to do and and it should have been handled in a different way, I think. Thanks, Ian. Um, so we touched on the automated um, door closers um, during the presentation there. Um, question in, um, are acoustic door release devices accepted on doors to high risk rooms, such as kitchens or laundries? Mm. I would say no. You'd say no. I would say no. I would say no. Sorry, Gary. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see your hand there, please. Sorry, I was just going to say my opinion is no. I, I agree. I agree, Gary, because, simply because is, is it the most reliable and robust system yeah. or yeah. not? And I'm, I'm a great believer that going back at times to engineering control is, is a great thing to do. Um, acoustic pullback devices might work in, in many, many cases and many operations, just like any other type of, of device, just like the, the self-closing mechanism. But if you can use a more robust and reliable system, that would be yes. better. Yes. Yeah, agree, agree. Um, talking around uh, fitting of fire doors. Um, so a couple of similar questions in. Who is able to fit a fire door? Could a carpenter who has a rough idea of what they're doing fit that fire door? Gary, your hand straight up there. <laughs> that was yeah. We, we, we spoke earlier on about the competency of people mm. fitting, not just fire doors, but fire sets, which mm. includes the surround as well. So it, I've, I've been out on so many occasions as an enforcing officer uh, where Bodget and Scarpa have come and put the fire mm. doors in um, mm. and they don't meet any standard. So if I was... Uh, commissioning uh, work to be done to fit fire doors, I would want to know the competency of the person, find where they've done some previous work and get a reference, a testimonial that the doors were, were fit for purpose, etc. But many is the time people will always go for the cheapest option and, and you are the world's worst when you come along and say, well, it might look very good, but it's not a fire door. Uh, and I've got this problem all the time at the moment where people have had doors installed that don't meet any standard. I recently had the same issue in, in a building where they changed the flat door without asking because all the flat doors have, a, have their own certificate. And we had to get um, the health and safety um, consultant to come and inspect the door after the work had been done. And I kid you not, these are supposed to be like builders, but you could see the daylight in the yes. door gaps. And even the door, when you pushed it, it was moving. And I, was, I said, to, he had to come back three times to get that builder to get the door right. So what we're doing now, we're not, the any doors that will be fitted will be fitted by a competent individual, not Joe Soap, who's just yes. happened to be doing a refurb because that is a headache and, it not only puts the person who's flat that lives there at risk, it also puts the rest of the people in the building. And I'm not, I'm not playing that game. You used the word, interestingly, you used the word earlier about could a joiner do this particular piece of mm. work? Yeah, that's, that's a very, very interesting point. Yes, of course. But the other word to use is this fire door and frame, this door set with its strips and its self closed and everything else is actually an engineered solution. Yes. So it's almost like saying, yes, but the joiner can do it under the supervision of somebody who's got the experience and expertise and the, the competence and, and such like to, to project manage, for want of a term, that particular operation, that particular job. It's actually an engineered solution to yes. provide comp yes. compartmentation in the building, but also to provide a ready and easy means of escape where people can get through doors. Um, along the, the means of escape to the final exit from the building. With that then, if it's been installed by a competent person who's provided certification, yep. 
does the installation then need to be approved by a third party assessor? Oh, the fire risk assessor. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I have mine. Yeah. yeah. And so fire risk as, assessor. As um, Anne mentioned, I think earlier on, the inspection program, the plan preventative maintenance program for inspecting the doors and checking the, the gaps and so on and such like, um, that might be done every six months. So that's again a, a fire door inspector or assessor would be would be looking at it. Um, another thing also we touched on occasionally is is the gap around the door. Um, you know, a joiner may fit the door into the frame, etc. But the engineered solution is to have a con consistent gap all the way around the edges. So it fits the specification um, to be say three mil or less. No, that's great. Um, and uh, just watching the time, we are coming up. So this will be the last one. But as I say, if we haven't got through to your questions, um, we will follow them up after today's session. So um, one that we probably all see in the workplace, I see lots of conflicting information regarding how the gap between the door frame and the fragment of structure is sealed. Pink foam, blue foam, and of course, good old silicon. If the manufacturer's testing uses that particular item, that is, except, is that acceptable or is there a hard and fast rule that should be followed? Interesting. There's a question. Um, all, all I can say from my experience is I've seen pink foam used many times. Um, I'm sure different colors of foam are available, um, but it's intumescent foam, it fills the gaps and is is there as a a piece of passive fire protection it it's sitting waiting hoping never to be used um, but it's a gap filling foam it's a specific product you wouldn't nip into b and q and just pick the first capsule or whatever and have a, a ratchet gun to, to pump it into the uh, into the gap no it's a specific application and i think also the word uh, cost and expense has to come into this. It might be expensive to use, but this is life safety equipment, and that's what you have to pay. Gary, final word with you. Yeah, final word. We mentioned earlier on about the um, the Fire Safety England regulations, where the responsible person is now, in indeed, responsible for work carried out. And I try and impress upon people there is a major training need there. If you are the responsible person, do they really know what they're responsible for? And I would suggest not. Mm. Thanks, Gary. It's, it's yeah. a question of, of education and information yes. and awareness and publicity and so on. I think there's been quite not not little publicity, but it's been very muted recently. Yes, yes. I would agree. Apart from, apart from the work that um, that we've been doing ourselves. No, I think uh, um, something that we could talk about for a lot longer, but unfortunately, we have run out of time on today's session. So I would like to thank Anne for presenting today. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you to Gary and Ian for joining us at the end there for the Q&A session. And in the background behind the Irish Webinars logo, we have Amir, who's been making sure that things have been running smoothly for us today. So thank you very much, Amir. The presentation recording, the slides uh, will be available to you, um, both on the LinkedIn page, the recordings page on the Irish website and the Fire Risk Management Group microsite page via the Irish website, um, either uh, today, um, uh, not today, sorry, tomorrow um, or early next week. Um, so please keep an eye out for that. Please do join us in September if you can for our Fire Risk Management Group conference and be sure to give us a follow on LinkedIn as well. Please keep an eye out for the uh, Q&As in full, which will also follow with the presentation and slides as well. I hope you've enjoyed today's session and thank you very much for attending. Our next session is in July. We will be doing a webinar on um, PEEPs, so personal emergency evacuation plans. So keep an eye out for information on that website, um, on that webinar as well, sorry. 
Thank you for joining us and have a great day, whatever you're doing. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.